Hi, John with eTrailer. Today we got a 2023 Chevrolet Equinox and we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Curt Class 2 receiver hitch. We've got an inch and a quarter uh, receiver opening on this Class 2 hitch. It does have a nice, it's a gloss powder coat finish on here. Um, it's going to accept a half inch pin and clip. Now, the pin and clip, if you're new to towing, these do not come with uh, the hitch. So we have these available on e-trailer. We also have a locking type. Even though this is a class 2 receiver, the safety chain loops that are welded up underneath here will still accept a fairly large size Clevis style hook or even your standard S style. This class 2 receiver actually has a 525 pound tongue weight rating, which is pretty good for if you've got racks and stuff like that, if you want to put your e-bikes on there. It's a pretty decent weight rating for that. As far as towing, you got a 3,500 pound capacity, uh, but you want to check your owner's manual to make sure that you can even haul that much. So let's get some measurements on this hitch. From the ground to the top of the inside edge is 11 inches, and from the center of the pinhole out to the edge of the fascia here is 5.5 inches. So those measurements are important to keep in mind when you're looking for, uh, say, either a, a, a hitch um, or bike racks. And even you might, in this vehicle sits pretty low. You may want something that has a slight rise to it. As far as installation on this hitch, it's fairly straightforward. Um, you're gonna want two people. Um, it, it's it's pretty heavy and it gets a little precarious sometimes, but it's not too bad overall. We had to use just basic hand tools, um, other than a torque wrench which most people have, but if you don't, we have them on our website, or you can uh, rent one from an auto parts store. Um, and uh, maybe just a file uh, or a deburring tool just to open up a hole just a little bit. Uh, otherwise, this is something that could absolutely be done on your driveway on the weekend. The very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up our fascia back here. Uh, it's held in place by two T15 bolts. What that's gonna do is gonna allow us to drop this exhaust down. It'll give us the clearance to get our exhaust around this. So let's go ahead and get these off right now. Okay, so we're ready to drop the exhaust. Uh, what we're going to do uh, is use this cam buckle tie down strap. And if you locate your coil springs on the back up here, we can just link up right to these, come under your exhaust, go over to the other side, and then tighten that up. And that will allow us to bring this down in a controlled manner. So once we have the cam buckle strap holding the exhaust, we're going to start taking off the exhaust mounts. Now on the rear of the vehicle here, we've got two, one on each side. And this is a 15 millimeter uh, bolt that has to come out. These nuts don't come off. These are weld nuts. So you want to take the bolt out. That's one. That's two. Now, it's okay to just let this thing hang because the whole thing's going to be coming down. And then we just repeat to the other side over here. The back exhaust hangers uh, taken off, that's going to lead us back to this one right behind the muffler. If you have trouble getting yours off, uh, you can always kind of soap these up, make it easier to get off, and use a pry bar if you have to. I'm going to take this exhaust hanger that we left on here, and I'm going to slide it forward here so it'll clear this fascia. Our next step is actually we're going to be dropping the exhaust. We're going to clear the uh, rear bumper fascia right here um, So by loosening this strap. And you may have to wiggle it around a little bit and pull down on your fascia. We're going to have our access points here. The hitch is actually going to install in this hole, this hole, and this hole. The hardware uh, that we get with the kit, the fish wire, this block, and the carriage bolt, all have to go through this hole. And as you can see, it's not going to fit right now. So we are going to take a deburring tool and we're just going to round out this hole a little bit. It's not going to take much, but it's going to allow us to get the hardware up inside of here. Uh, if you don't have a deep burring tool, you can use a uh, like a rat tail file or something like that. It's really not that much work just to open this up. We got it opened up enough and we're going to test fit these, make sure these things can slide up and we are good to go. Now, uh, we have bare metal here from when we were deburring, so uh, one of the things I like to do here is we're going to use some clear coat and we're going to spray that up just to keep rust and corrosion from forming. 
Well, while we're waiting for the paint to dry, this is the hardware you're going to get in the kit. You got the fish wire, you have the block, and you've got the uh, carriage bolt. So, uh, we'll just go ahead and show you how they how they come. And I'm going to undo this here. Um, and the way this works, if you can figure out which way to take this apart, uh, is we're going to thread this through the block, and then thread the bolt on there. And then, so the fish wire, as you feed it up through the frame. This is going to feed everything through and come out the hole. We're going to feed the wire up. We can start on this side with the shortest hole, and I like to bend the wire just so it's able to come back and come loop around. So we're going to put the coil side in. Just try not to block the camera here. So I'm going to feed it like this, and then we take our block first and then thread the carriage bolt on. And we're going to feed the block up first and then the carriage bolt and then pull down on the fish wire and like magic it's in place. And again we're going to try to pre-bend this and kind of put it in an arc so hopefully it'll find its way to us. You can stick your finger up there and kind of feel it. So there we go. So same thing. Block first, then the carriage bolt. Thread the carriage bolt on. And then fish it through. Block first, then the carriage bolt. Fish it through. Gotcha, okay. And then go ahead and repeat that for this hole, uh, and then you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, so the next step is we are gonna put this up on the Equinox. Now, this thing's pretty heavy. You're probably gonna want two people uh, for this job because you have to feed the fish wires through these holes on each side. So, here we go. You can kinda go, you're gonna have to go over the exhaust brackets. And then we're going to feed these through the mounting holes. Now the middle hole has two holes. You're going to use the oval hole and then the oval hole down here as well. So we feed these through before it goes up without poking your eyes out. And the only thing to do is to line them up up here and get them in. Now, we'll unthread this one. And you want to put this flange nut on there. You only need one on right now just to hold it up. And that way you can access the other ones. So once we've got them snugged up finger tight, next step is going to be take your socket and go ahead and just snug these up. This is a three quarter inch size in our instance right here. What we're going to do is just snug these up and we'll come back and torque them later to the manufacturer's specs. Once everything is torqued to spec, the only thing that there is left to do is put the muffler and exhaust back up. So you'll be feeding uh, these things around under the flange again, putting it up mounting the exhaust brackets and uh, these tabs will help hold them in place once you get it up there they'll kind of slide up and over uh, tighten those down uh, put this exhaust clamp back on put your two T15 torques and that's it and that'll do it for our look at the Curt class 2 receiver hitch on our 2023 Chevrolet Equinox